Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm gonna show you how to set up and grow this. This is an infinite crack key, refillable crack key system that incorporates float valves into crack key hydroponic bucket systems and allows you to grow pumpkin for an unlimited amount of time filling automatically. I love doing introductions like this because you'll get to see exactly how all of these tomato plants are going in the ground-based NFT 90 millimeter pipe system and have a look at the result of that ground-based NFT. Now this is actually a foreword for the Kratky video because I had some problems with the float valves, the new style that I was using. So we're going to install them anyway, but later on in the video, I'm going to install the old style of float valve and we're going to use that instead because I had a couple of problems throughout this grow. So if you are watching this video, don't just go out and purchase those float valves on a whim. Wait until you see the results so that you understand the way that I progressed through this idea. All right, let's get to building our crack key systems. So with this infinite crack key, I'm going to start them off on a standard crack key technique um, until they've established themselves. And then I'm just gonna add in our float valves and our pipes so that we can maintain that nutrient level for ever. There are going to be a few challenges with this grow. We might have some teething issues when we first add in our ball valves because I'm unsure whether to use full strength nutrient or half strength nutrient. But these are things that I will find out and I will let you know so you can do better. All right, you're gonna have to forgive the mess here because I'm right in the middle of cleaning all of my Beto buckets. With the crack key tops that have a hole in them, these are gonna be absolutely fine the way they are because they are gonna fit in our net pots in the same way that we had them in our last system. But with this style, here that I've created. I'm actually going to remove this plate. I think that the annoyance of the setup is going to put me off utilizing this technique every single crack key grow. That is the cocoa from the last tomato. But the beauty of these, I can just throw a 42 millimeter Jiffy Peat pellet with plant in it and use the skewer technique rather than filling up a net pot with hydrogen. So that's all our lids prepared and I've got our buckets here. And this is what our float valve is going to look like. We are going to put a hole in the top of our crack key system, which is going to be this 15 millimeter poly riser. So I'm actually gonna hesitate a guess and say that these risers are 15 mils diameter on the internal because it looks about 22 on the out. I'm using a 22 millimeter hole saw bit right in the center of the radius. That will allow us to drop our float valve and hold it up as well. So that is what it's gonna look like and we'll just have our hose connected to there and that is going to feed our crack key system. If you wanna raise the water level or drop the water level, all you have to do is you get a hose clamp and clamp it around here and it will hold it in place. So you can lift it up, undo the hose clamp, slide the hose clamp down and hose clamp that in place and that will allow you to raise or lower the level of the water in our crack key system. Okay, so first things first, you can see I've got a heap of cucurbits here that are part of the float box system. I'm gonna utilize the big open space behind um, all of these systems as the driveway curves around. Okay, so while I'm filling these buckets, I'm going to mix up the nutrient as well. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to measure out the amount of nutrient I need for all four buckets. Then I'm gonna mix that nutrient in about a liter of hot water. So each of these buckets is going to start off with 35 grams of both the calcium nitrate and the diamond spec T. That is because I'm mixing just above half strength nutrient. It's for 65 liters. So micronutrients, one gram per liter for full strength, 35 grams per each bucket. And I'm also going to dash out some PH up to bring my water up to the pH I want it at. So here I have 20 mils of pH adjuster. For each 10 liters, I add one mil to adjust it up one factor of pH, but I don't want to go the full factor. So I'm actually going to only add in about five mils per each bucket. Okay. So here we're using 35 grams per bucket. So four times 35 is 120, 140. Into each of these 
containers. Then I fill it up to a liter with hot water and mix it up. And then I give each tub a quarter. 140 grams. 140 grams there. And the thing that I always find so bloody cool is that all of that nutrient carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and water is going to turn into the plants that you see until the crack key starts topping up. And when the crack key starts topping up, you'll probably only have like this again for the entirety of the grow. That much weight, 140, 280 grams of fertilizer nutrient and a ton of water and a ton of carbon dioxide will go into all of the plant matter that's created. That is mind blowing. So I'll fill these up with hot water to mix in the nutrient. Have a go at this little girl. <laughs> what are you doing, Fern? Hi. Oh, another one. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> this one's full. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I can lift this so that we can get more nutrient into it, even if it's on a bit of a diagonal like this. And from here, all I'm gonna do is add in 250 mils. Calcium nitrate first, then I'll come back and add the other elements. That is our nutrient solution made up. Just gonna grab a meter and we'll test out how I did. All right, so we've got a pH of 6.5, uh, which is within the range that I want. So ideally 5.5 to 6.5. And the Miller Siemens is 1.2, 1.18. I'm happy with both of those. And we can start setting up our tops with our plants in them. Okay, so for one of these pumpkins, we're gonna to need to have it at the bottom of this net cup because it's gonna be the one with the camera hole in the side of the roots. These are well and truly too large for my propagation shelving. So I'm glad that I'm getting them done now. Forgive the mess. I'm just going to take this out, plonk it into my Net cup. So I'm going to fill that up with hydrogen. There's one plant ready. Okay, there's our two net pot uh, pumpkins ready to go. And we can add the lids on. One is going to go on here. And I'm just going to slide it in like so. And yep, yeah, that's submerged. That's so good. And this one is going to go on here and we'll drop that in. Not bad. For the others, I've actually lost my bamboo skewers. So we're going to play around a bit. I'm just going to find something. I guess this is going to be proof of how cheap hydro can be. I'm just going to pierce this straight through with a stick like so <laughs> have a look we are at the bottom i'm just going to fill it up with a little bit more water so that we can get it touching the base of that plant perfect and i'm going to do the same with the other find a stick <laughs> pierce through your peat pellet like so and in the top all right now i'm going to fill this one up as well and those are our crack key systems set up and ready to go. I'm gonna leave them for a little bit in this orientation and then I'm gonna add in the float valves to make them infinite crack key about a week after this video, I'd say. So I'm gonna set up time-lapse cameras. We can see how they grow.
Okay, so our kraut here is at a really nice stage. All of our plants are flowering and they're going to start fruiting very soon. All of the containers have used up about half of their nutrient except for the back container, which has received a lot less light because it's a lot more shaded. So it's only used up about a quarter of its nutrient. And I'm going to move to the next stage of this video, which is the infinite part of the infinite Kratky. So to do that, we're going to grab our float valves and our poly risers and all the parts necessary and drop them into our Kratky setups. And this is the layout for our parts. On the left, you've got a float valve connected to our poly riser with a double-ended female BSP. I think it's a 15 millimeter BSP uh, female part. It goes into a 300 millimeter poly riser and then onto a 15 millimeter BSP to 13 millimeter hose fitting. So we're going to plumbers tape up all of these parts in between so that they've got a nice seal. I'm not gonna put on the plumbers tape for the top one until I've slid it through the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up these and drop them into my crack key systems. And just before I go and add this into the system, I want to check that there is enough pressure coming out of my IBC so that we'll feed these float valves with just gravity. It's going to push up through our hole, like so. And I don't even think I'm going to need hose clamps to adjust this up and down because I've made those holes really the perfect size. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a irrigation clip and that'll just make sure that it doesn't go up or down further than I want it to go. I'm just going to attach my hose which is connected to my IBC over here and this is full of 2.4 EC hydroponic nutrient, uh, flowering hydroponic nutrient, uh, my Campbell's Diamond Tea and Campbell's Nitro Cal here and we'll have a look at what is going on with the EC in a second but I just want to try this out first. So I'll turn that on. So I'm going to connect up this hose, which has my IBC gravity feeding from it, but you can see how low my IBC is at the moment because that is where the gravity feed stops. So I'm going to connect this up and we're going to lower it down like that. And you can see that is our float valve working. Um, obviously there's nothing to fill up at the moment and once that gets dropped into water um, it will stop filling at the level of the float so that's fantastic I'm really happy with that I'm just gonna have it at that level there so it keeps refilling about halfway up the container and I can lift this into my cracky container and that is my float valve and my float level set you can see there but that will just keep refilling until the float stops the device. And I'll come back and have a look at that in a second, but you can see there that it's already cutting the flow and I'll just close that up. All of our infinite crack key systems are now filling up from float valves from exactly where the water is positioned in them at this point in time. So about three quarters, three quarters, half and half. But first, let's just have a quick look at the EC in these systems. The EC and pH of this system in the back, probably the most varied because it's used up almost half of its nutrient. So the pH is 5.6, which is perfect. And the EC is 1.2. 1.2 EC, 5.6 pH. So same again. This is our root time-lapse one. 5.7 pH, 1.3, 1.4 EC. Okay, so I'm happy with these to top up with the 2.4 EC from my reservoir because I want it to raise as these guys fruit. That's a very good sign. It means I don't have to do anything. I don't have to create a new reservoir.
Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since I added in these float valves and I've had a couple of problems with a few of them not activating and the nutrient overflowing, which means that I had to turn off the float valves on all of these crack key systems. As you can see, they're doing really well. There is a little bit of a fungal infection, but we've got really nice fruit set on all of our pumpkins. And you can see there that we're getting heaps of fruit, especially on this one um, and over here as well. So the system is working rather nicely. You can see we've just got <laughs> fruit after fruit after fruit. And I'm really happy with how the crack key is doing even without the float valves. Unfortunately, they're not working the way that I'd like with the gravity feed system. I'm not sure why this is. Some of them aren't feeding at all and some of them are feeding and then the float isn't actually the flow. Okay, so I've actually been uh, re-evaluating the time-lapse footage and what I've realized is that some of my floats that were causing my cracky systems to overflow uh, were leaking and some of the floats were actually working as with the one in the time-lapse you can actually see the float working and then stop working once I turn the system off to stop all the other floats from overflowing. So I feel like I had a couple of faulty floats which made me think that the floats weren't working with the gravity feed which is not true apparently so me switching over to the other style of float valve was unnecessary it's just that i didn't realize that some of the floats that i had were faulty that being said it is useful to have two different ways of refueling infinite cracky so this isn't a complete waste of time let's get back to the video so what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm going to switch over to a float valve, our ball float versions on all of these because they're actually doing really well as crack key. So I'm gonna disconnect all of these float valves. I'm gonna pull them out. I'm gonna drill holes in the side for the ball floats that I use in my other rain go to grow systems and swap them all out. I'll give you a quick look inside the crack key and you can see that one's right down. So that one definitely needs a top up. Uh, that is the one that I've been filming and again, that one's right down as well. That one is not so much, but this is the one that's the shadiest. They all really need a top up and we're down on that again. So I don't think I'll have any problem putting in a float valve coming in from the side. However, I would have designed this system a little differently, having the plant over one side away from the where the float valve is going to be. So we'll just see how that spacing arrangement works out. Okay, so I really like these float valves. You really can't go wrong with them. Um, after a while, sometimes these can fill with water, which you've got to watch because if they fill with water, gravity feed will just run out. But other than that, they're pretty much foolproof. I'm gonna just put a hole in it, like so. And then we can seal this onto our system. Because we're going to be utilizing the float ball pretty much completely depressed, because what we want to happen is as the water rises, we want the water to be down below the float and push up. And this is going to stop the roots getting on top of the float and depressing it. Um, so it'll act like sort of a lever. Well, that's exactly what it is. And that is going to allow us to utilize this style of float without the roots interfering with it. So I'm just gonna use the same fitting, put this on, and then I can just spin this valve. There is our float valve. And as the water raises, the water will just lift that, that ball float and stop the flow. And that won't be interfered by the roots at all, hopefully. And I'm gonna do the same for the rest. And now that I'm like thinking about it properly, this is a wholly cheaper setup because you don't have to buy any of this stuff. So that's a good thing. This is kind of why I do these experiments so that you don't have to waste the money that I've wasted. <laughs> now, one thing I recommend doing to these floats before you put them in your system is there is a little tab inside of the float and it has a little stopper. Now that's actually meant to be a filter, um, but it tends to block up with algae if you don't remove it. I'm just gonna pull the tab and remove this little plug that's in the end. So what happens is um, if any light gets into this and algae starts to grow, the algae will actually block that filter, whereas if you have it open, the algae is actually allowed to pass through that big 
opening in the back of the float, which is preferable to, you know, the plant not getting any nutrient. So I'm going to now turn on this system and we can watch it fill. So I actually installed a tap here to stop it from overflowing with the other float valves, uh, which is kind of useful right now. So I'm going to turn this on and these float valves should start filling. And that is happening in all of our containers. So I'm gonna leave these and I'll come back in a little bit and we'll make sure they're full. And as you can see there, that has filled up perfectly. And this one is actually leaking. That is not good. Wow, okay, that has overfilled. There's not enough leverage on it. Okay, I'm just gonna have it out a little bit further like that. All right, so I should be able to sort that one out. So let's get back to the time lapse. Okay, so it's been about a week since I installed this style of float valves and I am happy with how they're responding, even though I've let the reservoir dry out. But I'm actually unhappy with the health of the plants after the refilling process because as the nutrient dropped and then as I refilled it, I, I feel like I've drowned the plants and caused a heap of stress, which has allowed fungal infections uh, to take hold and the health of the plants has suffered. Rather than wait for them to recover, which they are doing on the ends, I can see all new growth. I'm actually going to restart the crack key systems. All things considered, I'm actually pretty happy with how this system has performed. And I think that once we have these crack key systems properly set up so that they refill consistently and we're not drowning the roots all at once, I think we'll have a really nice system. That's nothing to turn your nose up at. And this, while I'm cooking dinner, is what it looks like on the inside. Oh. How good is that? It's actually quite cool sitting here eating the produce that I grew in the video that I'm editing whilst editing the video. Not bad. <laughs> Those are some nice sized pumpkins. What else have we got? Down here. So I've managed to get a few pumpkins off the system and let's have a look at the roots. If I lift this up, we've got a really nice large root formation underneath that pumpkin. And again, you can see how white the roots are there. Not a complete failure. So I am definitely happy that I've tweaked this system so that we've got these float valves in place now. I'm going to set these guys up with cucumbers in them and we're going to place them on the trellis system I have for the passion fruit and hopefully they'll beat the passion fruit over that system and we can see how they grow in an infinite crack key system now that we've updated the system with the float valves and that's it I hope you have enjoyed this episode of who chose it's been a bit of a mess but we have managed to iron out some kinks in this crack key system, and I think that's more valuable sometimes than getting a bumper harvest. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time <laughs> on Who Chose.